The good news of Jesus Christ is ours to embody, ours to proclaim right now in this place where we are, wherever that may be. It isn't some big thing that happens out there. It's how we greet the person at McDonald's or how we drive our car or how we speak with our brother or sister or family member. How we act in those moments where it's so easy to abdicate responsibility and say, well, I was just angry. That is the manger. That is the cross. That is our moment of taking up our cross daily and following Jesus. If our words and our actions don't honor the dignity of another, then our words and actions need to change, even if we're afraid. And so in this Christmas season, to embody Jesus, if I'm going to welcome Jesus to my life, then I have to create space in my life for Jesus. And that means my life is going to change. It means it's going to be transformed. The Gospelers spend a lot of time in how Jesus lived and a lot of time on Jesus' teachings of salvation. That if you love me, you will feed my sheep. If you'll love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you love me, you're going to act differently than the world. And what's foolishness to the world is the way of Jesus. So Jesus is born and God is incarnated and lays down his life to come and bring this message of hope and peace to us and walks among us knowing the world is going to reject it. Knowing the world in our own humanistic way, in the same way they rejected Jesus, we reject truth now. In both ways of Jesus' birth and crucifixion, God's laying down all that God in a way could be in order to have relationship with us in a way that is best for us. There's joy in it, even, even in the hard places, that God is with us, that Emmanuel has come to us, that God redeems all, and that in the end, I do think Rob Bell's right, that love wins, because it's the greatest force, and that no matter how dark this moment may be or how hard this time may be, that the resurrection is coming and being worked out in us. And so we're not alone, but in order to really experience Jesus, we're going, to have to, we're going to have to take up our cross. We're going to have to lay our life down as we've known it and take up the life that God's calling us to. And there's great joy in it because the truth sets us free. And the more, the closer we are to truth, the freer we become, the less afraid we are because we know what it is we're about. And all the things we seek and hope that when we're in that moment of fearing the most, we're the closest to finding God because God's just on the other side of the fear. And if we just yield into it and say, okay, Lord, I'm going to just yield in through the fear, then we discover God and resurrection and hope and peace and freedom and restoration that we didn't think was possible. And in this time, so much is telling us to be afraid and to have our actions be defensive or protective, to have our whole life run by avoiding fear or controlling fear or reacting to fear. And so little of our time is spent reacting to love or for love or in response to love. And so part of the Christian movement of the, the work of Jesus is to be people who are responding to love and not to fear, to love and compassion and not to, you know, disdain or hate. And, um, and that's where we'll find freedom is when we do what Jesus calls us to. On the cross, Jesus is so free in a way. Because while he's lamenting and Father, don't, you know, you know, don't forsake me, he's also offering salvation to the thief next to him. He continues to be in relationship to all of the people around him, even in this extreme moment of suffering. He's still relating to his mother. Mother, here's your son. And son, here's your mother. You'll be with me in paradise. And um, he never ceases to be about that core message of love and relationship and forgiveness. And then with his resurrection, we see the fruit of it. It will win out. Love will win. God wins. <laughs>